valve horn, patented in 1818, completes the story of the development of the horn, and Barry Tuckwell performs the music of every period on it. His most recent project has been to record every piece Mozart wrote for the solo horn, including some rare sketches of incomplete works. In studying the original manuscripts, Barry Tuckwell has become fascinated with the performer for whom Mozart wrote, Ignaz Leutgeb, nicknamed the donkey throughout these manuscripts. We know more, I think, about him as a performer because of the music that was written for him, uh, rather than what was written about him as a man. He's something of a mystery. We know he was a very, very good friend of Mozart's, and he was pestering him for concertos, and we we're very, very lucky that Mozart wrote four. Well, he actually wrote more, but there are four that survived for Mr. Lloyd Gebb. Um, the fact that he was a very good friend also meant that in Mozart's own way, he had lots of jokes with him, because we now have been told officially that Mozart um, actually was playing tricks on people a great deal of the time. One thing of particular interest is the sketch for the, uh, what is known as the second movement of the first concerto, the one in D major, because the, the version that is played is not actually in Mozart's handwriting, but the sketch, which is the important one, has. For starters, he writes out the, the um, string parts, and he writes out the speed, allegro, which means fast. On the solo line, he writes adagio, which means slow. <laughs> Is that a joke for himself or for Lloyd Gibb? I don't know. Then it goes on, and the orchestra plays da da ba 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 bum eight bars, short introduction. And he writes on the top, over to you, Mr. Donkey. And so it goes on. In fact, Mozart wrote a running commentary, guiding Lloyd Gebb all the way through the piece. Over to you, Mr. Donkey. Take heart. Hurry up. Come on. Hurrah. Cheer up, it's all over. Now it's your turn. You beast, what a crack note. Hi. Ouch. Well done, you little man. Don't make me laugh. Help! Breathe in, breathe in. Finished yet? 
I think sometimes Mozart's laughing at himself. Well, I'm not sure that he ever thought that this would be a way to perform the work, but it's certainly very funny reading to, to, to look at the music and see these comments. <laughs> and uh, the, 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 the way the words are placed uh, is most relevant to the music that is being played. Do those fragments also suggest that perhaps be, that the rest of the pieces are lost, that there have been things lost. We've got fragments not of something begun, as it were, but as, mm. of something completed, but we have only fragments left. Well, it's certainly known on other instruments, for instance, that he wrote bassoon concertos that are, are lost. Mm. Oh, there's a great, great deal of music that um, probably we'll never see. It's been burnt, lost, destroyed. But the E major fragment that you just referred to would have been Everybody has said this, the greatest concerto that he ever wrote. We don't know when he wrote it, we don't know why he wrote it, and we certainly don't know why he left it off. It starts off, goes beautifully, horn plays, the orchestra stops, eight bars later the horn just stops, and that's all we have. It's a very, very tantalizing piece of music. Has the horn, as it were, kept up with uh, modern music, with modern composers? Have they been able to use it? The sonata by Richard Rodney Bennett I find particularly satisfying because he uses the horn as a romantic instrument but very much away from the, the, the sort of tonal sense that it's not particularly in any key. You don't say, oh, that sounds like D major and now it's playing in the minor. It doesn't go that way at all. Uh, that you couldn't play. This sort of music you couldn't play without valves. And yet he uses the, 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 the chromatic aspect of the horn uh, uh, coupled with a great amount of uh, agile writing. Again, which would have been totally impractical on the old horn. It's, it's writing for a, a new breed of players, almost. What do you what do you think of, the, uh, of Benjamin Britten's writing for the horn, a serenade?